So I am here with Devin Clark. Devin's going to be fighting Mike Rodriguez at UFC 223, April 7th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, so Devin, thanks uh, for talking to us today. Uh, I got uh, one question for you, just to start off the bat, and it's kind of going back a bit. Um, I guess both you and Mike Rodriguez came into uh, the UFC kind of through, uh, let's call them the talent scouting shows, or you know, you came through the uh, Looking for a Fight series, he came through the Contender series. Uh, so, you know, can you kind of relate to how he's coming in, and uh, does that give you any sort of edge, given this is his actual UFC debut? Now, he obviously had the big flying knee win on the Contender Series, but, you know, those don't, those don't happen every day, and obviously you're not going to be expecting another one necessarily. But what kind of fight are you expecting to go down in Brooklyn? Now, have you uh, have you spent a lot of time watching him? I mean, obviously you saw the Contender series. Is there anything about him that stands out uh, in particular? Uh, yeah, he likes to set up that, that you know that flying knee, that rear knee, and he uses you know a front keep to do it. So, um, or if the guy stands still, he'll he'll throw it there too. So, you know that that's definitely one of his uh, strong suits is his flying knee and you know his uh, Muay Thai type stuff. But so, you know that's what Obviously, you're going to be looking for the win. Obviously, uh, you know you prefer the finish. How do you get to uh, to that in this fight? So you're, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're still with Jackson Wink. Yeah, yeah, I'm here training right now. Yeah. Now they are obviously one of uh, MMA's most storied camps. Uh, a lot of champions, a lot of big names. What has training uh, there been like? How has it elevated your game? And you know, I'll, I'll ask, how's this camp going? Are you working with uh, anyone in particular for this camp? Um, you know, just a little bit of everybody. Um, you know, there's just the, you know the big guys are in the room. Uh, Bavon Lewis, another guy that was on the Contender Series, he's got a decent you know decent range, just like uh, this guy, John Jones a little bit, and you know just a few other a few of the other guys around the gym. All right, now uh, switching track for a little. Obviously, uh, the big fight coming up is the focus, but. To rewind, you have seen London just passed. Uh, Jan Blockwitz got the win against Manua. Did you get a chance to catch that? Oh, yeah. yeah I sure did. Now, obviously, really good <laughs> <laughs> obviously you, uh, you've you you know come up against Blackwitz before, and, and that was a great, great fight uh, that he had. Um, does seeing his performance do anything for you? Like, I mean... You've lost to him. He goes out, goes on a bit of a tear, gets the, a big win over Manua. Does that lessen the blow? Do you learn anything from that fight? Um, yeah, you know, that's a fight I wish I could get back, and hopefully I will get that fight back one day. Hopefully I can rematch him one day because um, I know I can, I can beat him. I made, you know, I made one mistake in that fight, and it cost me the fight. He's, you know, really good. Uh, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so he choked me when he could. And, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a fight, but uh, definitely... I was happy about what I did on my feet and stuff like that. And, um, so, yeah, know, knowing that I can hang with those top contenders, that I am one of those top, top contenders. So I just, uh, you know, just got to take my time and get there. 
Now, that fight was uh, interesting as well because of the state of the light heavyweight division these days. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a weird one. Obviously, you've got Stipe fighting DC, DC going up to, to heavyweight for that. First of all, what are your thoughts on the promotion booking that? Because it feels like it might logjam the division a little. While we're on the subject, who wins that? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a hard one to, to call because they're both, uh, you know, I, DC could probably get it done with his wrestling, but, you, you know, you, you can't count Stipe out of anything. He's such a tough fighter. That's what he does in the day is just fight. So, you know, it's a, it's a toss-up for me. Now, whether, whether DC wins and goes up, whether he loses and comes back, it seems like 205 is kind of waiting for contenders to emerge, almost like it's anyone's ball game. I mean, Gustafson's been there, kind of there forever, really, all the way back to uh, the Jones fight in Toronto. Uh, without thinking too far ahead, though, um, when you look at it, obviously there's opportunity. You get the win against Rodriguez, a couple more. I mean, for anyone, you're in the mix. Is there anyone else in the division looking ahead that you'd like to throw down with later in the year? Now, as far as the year is concerned, are you hoping to get back in the cage a couple more times? What's your What's your plan for twenty eighteen? Yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's it's still early in the year, so you know, hopefully at least one, you know, at least once, but two more times would be good. Okay. Now, one of the other things I wanted to bring up, um, I know you've done a lot of charity work, uh, especially for Down syndrome awareness. And if I'm not wrong, uh, a son of a friend of yours, I think he might have been uh, part of your management team, had the condition. But how did you uh, how did you get involved with it and you know come to be such a big part of that? Yeah, my guy that does some marketing for me, Kevin Kroger, his son Camden uh, has Down syndrome. I met him, and then you know the relationship just kind of took off. And um, you know, obviously there's a connection there, and figured why not use my my platform to you know do some good and you know bring a, bring awareness to the situation there. And that's just kind of what we've done. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw some photos with uh, you and Holly home with some charity T-shirts. Uh, it, it's absolutely, I think it's fantastic that you're doing it. Um, if there is one thing you could, you know, say or let people know about people with Down syndrome, what would it be? which I, I think is probably a message that gets lost sometimes these days, but I 100% agree. And I saw you're also involved in uh, something called Garrett's Fight that had a, a fighter who was uh, born with Downs who actually was uh, looking to get his, his first fight in. So how did you get involved in that one? Um, Garrett, um, well, my, uh, Kevin Kroger, you know, he has connections all over the, all over the country with uh, you know, down, down syndrome networks and stuff like that. And that's kind of how we got connected and uh, ended up driving to St. Louis for his fight and ended up being in his corner. And, you know, now we're, now we're friends. So, and uh, Garrett, he, I know he trains every day and, you know, he's, he's about that life. So definitely a good guy and, you know, just a fighter just like me. All right, man. Well, you know what? Props to you for doing it. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And uh, it's great to see, uh, that, you know, you're using the, the platform that you have to, to do great things. Now, one more question for you. UFC 223 against Mike Rodriguez at the Barclays Center. What's your prediction for the fight? Uh, I'm going to hurt him. That's my, <laughs> one way or another, I'm going to hurt him. That's my prediction. That's about all I got there. All right. Well, I am looking forward to it, man. Hey, thanks very much again for uh, taking the time. Um, and we, uh, you know, we're obviously everyone's looking forward to the fight. Yeah, 